Hello, my name is Andrei Hrobov, and I'm the lead developer of Kitboost on Spark implementation. Today, we're going to talk about Kitboost on Spark. The intended audience of this presentation is data scientists and data engineers, people who apply machine learning techniques in practice. So we will focus on practical aspects and not machine learning theory. For those who are interested in the mathematical and algorithmical foundations of Catboost, you can find the relevant papers on our website and Catboost AI. This is the second presentation intended for those who has already watched Introducing Catboost Spark video and are interested in more technical details. A brief reminder about what is Catboost. Catboost is a machine learning algorithm that uses gradient boosting on decision trees, or GBDT. It is available as an open source library with permissive Apache 2 license, so it is both free as in freedom and free as in beer. See Introducing Catboost Spark presentation for more basic info. Let's begin by examining the generic machine learning workflow. We will deal with supervising learning problems. When learning data sets contain labels for data, possibly indirectly via ordered pairs. First, learned data sets are used to train a model. Then this model can be used for application. The trained model is used as a function to predict unknown labels based on future values for new data sets. This is the primary purpose of the model. Evaluation. The trained model can also be used for additional evaluation processes. This generic workflow is applicable to both CatBoost standalone libraries as well as for CatBoost Spark implementation. Let's recall how Spark clusters are organized. There is a cluster manager that orchestrates all the work between many applications. There are worker nodes that are ready to provide their resources to do some useful processing. Then there is a driver program that manages a particular processing workflow that belongs to a certain application. All the Spark processing from the driver's point of view is managed using Spark Context. Spark Context obtains free worker nodes with the necessary minimum resources to run Spark Context tasks from Cluster Manager. Then it starts executor processes on them. Executors are processes that execute smaller units of work needed to be performed by driver program called tasks. Driver program created Spark contexts and create a directed a cyclic graph of computations which executes lazily, only when the resulting data is needed to save or display, the necessary steps of DAGs are executed. Spark Scheduler is smart and it is often able to optimize computation paths in a DAG. Tasks are created by Spark context and are sent to some executor to execute it there. Tasks usually take locality into account. Executor will prefer to process local data available in RAM. Here, we will look at the training part of the generic workflow as implemented in Catabus Spark. First, data is loaded to Spark data frames from the persistent storage, like local files, or more often distributed storage, like HDFS, S3, etc. These data frames should at least contain a column with features and either a label column or an attached data frame with pairs data. Then the quantization process is performed and numeric features data is compressed into data with bins, typically 8 bit each. If there are categorical features and some of them have more than one hot max size unique values, it is a boost parameter to choose between categorical feature processing types. CTR's precomputation is performed. In this case, the new derived features are added to the data frame for learning. Data is ready to be used in CatBoost training process after that. The resulting model is then saved to the permanent storage for the possible later use. Here, we will look at the application part of the generic workflow as implemented in CatBoost Spark. First, data is loaded to Spark data frames from the persistent storage, like local files, or more often distributed storage like HDFS, S3, etc. These data frames should at least contain a column with features. Then the quantization process is performed and numeric features data is compressed into data with bins, typically 8 bit each. Data is ready to be used in the application operation after that. Note that CTR computation step is not used here in contrast to training. Model application doesn't require that. Finally, the result will be a data frame 
with additional prediction related columns. This data frame, or only a part of it with predictions, can be saved to the permanent storage if needed. Let's look at the quantization process with more details. First, learn features data is sampled if it contains more than 200,000 object samples. Then, all numeric features data from this sampled data frame is downloaded to the driver. So, driver requires at least 2k multiplied by features number by value size memory. Then, feature quantization borders are computed based on this downloaded features data. Computed quantization borders are then broadcasted to the executors so they can start to apply it on complete source data, pre-transposing memory for the quantization process to be performed efficiently. This transposition of ROM and to request additional memory for executors. Make sure to request it. Finally, double values from the source vector are transformed to bin indices. Typically, this storage will take only 8 bits or 1 byte for each value. Here, we'll examine CTR's pre-calculation process that is performed before training. Even more work is performed here at the driver. CTRs typically require full column data for a particular categorical feature to be able to assign values for the computer CTR value sequentially. See algorithm details on our website. They also usually require target data, if they are not simple counters, which is downloaded to the driver as well. After raw CTR is computed, it is also quantized and the result is saved to the new data frame. All data frame with features and the new data frame with estimated CTRs both contain special unique row index for joining. After all CTRs are computed, all data frame is joined with new data frame with estimated CTRs. And as a result, a new data frame with all features and estimated features columns is created. This data is ready to be used in the training process. If no CTRs have to be computed, this step is just skipped. Finally, training process internals are presented here. Catboost has a generic distributed training implementation implemented in C++. For Spark, it has been embedded in the Spark architecture. Catboost distributed architecture involves one master node and a multitude of work nodes. Catboost master is run on the Spark driver node. Catboost workers are run inside Spark for each partition operation or quantized learned dataset so each worker gets its part of the learned data. In the first step, driver downloads the target related columns, like label, because they are needed by CatBoot Master. At the same time, for each partition operation is launched, and executors launch tasks and read and transpose quantized data set partitions, and then launch CatBoot workers. CatBoot workers get free ports and send them to CatBoost Master and start listening for CatBoost Master commands after that. Driver waits until workers have sent their info and then launches CatBoot Master in a separate process to isolate this process possible failures from itself. So, SpyDriver process is able to restart CatBoost Master if necessary. Then, CatBoost Master performs training iterations of loading operations that involve processing feature values to workers. As a final step, CatBoost Master Save the resulting model and driver loads it as GVM object and returns it from fit function. Catboost workers exit successfully and so, for each partition operation, finishes successfully as well. This is the final slide. Thank you for your attention. Here are some useful links about both Catboost in general and about Catboost Spark implementation in particular.